Okay, welcome back to a, another video. The purpose of this video is to show you how I make my place rigs. Now, um, it's the end of December now, and the place will start to come in February, March time. So I like to be prepared. So I'm gonna take you through how I make my place rigs. There's a few little subtle differences, uh, which I think make just a little bit of difference. But maybe they do, maybe they don't. But uh, if you're interested, stick around and uh, I'll show you how to make one. Okay, so the place rig that I'm gonna show you is basically a two hook clip down with a slight difference. The reason why I use this rig is it's very neat and it looks neat, you can cast far with it and it's pretty tangle free. I've never really had an issue. So these are comp the components um, you're gonna need. So we're, let's start from the bottom of the rig. First of all, you're gonna need a weight, whether that be a two ounce, a three ounce, or a four ounce. You pick, you choose. I like to pick a uh, grip weight. And it's gotta have the um, breakaway bait clip top thing there, okay? So it's gotta have one of those. So set that at the bottom of your rig board. So that's, that's going at the very bottom. Okay, the next thing we have up is, I use Gemini, uh, you can use whatever brand you like, this is just what I use. This is a Genie Swivel and Link Clip, okay? Now, that is simply what it is. The weight connects to this little thing here, and then your rig body goes onto that. All right, so that goes there. Moving up, crimp, so a small crimp, We'll have a bead. We'll then have a, what I call a um, rig clip. Uh, but this one's a bent style, so it's a bit neater. Then we have another bead, another crimp, a bit more line, and then we have the exact same setup there. And then we have just a swivel, rolling swivel, rolling swivel there. And then at the, what we connect the hooks to and the hook link is these little rig swivels there. Okay, so once again, Gemini rig swivel clip you're gonna need. You're gonna need some snood swivels. You're obviously gonna need some crimps. You're gonna need a shock leader or rig body. I choose to use 60 pound greased weevil shock leader. We'll need that. And then for the hook link, I just use 60 pound, um, mo uh, 16 pounds mono, you can use whatever you like, amnesia. Um, that's just what I've got in my tackle box I'm using at the moment. Also, you're gonna need some hooks. I like to choose a really small size hook for place. You'll find you catch a lot more the smaller hooks you go. That is a size one, and they are I've got a Nordic bend in them, so they're slightly off center, and I just find you hook them slightly better. So grab yourself a few of those, and you're also gonna want some beads, pick your colors. Some people like yellow and black. I um, quite like um, yellow and white. So um, I'm gonna use yellow and white today, but I'm just showing you those as an example. So you're also gonna need some beads. You're also gonna need, for my little setup, some split shot, okay? You're only gonna need two split shot because we're gonna use one split shot on each of the hook links. And I'll tell you why a little later on in the video. To complete the rig, you just need some crimp, a crimping tool to put the crimps down, not too tight, and just a pair of scissors. These are just standard kitchen scissors. They'll work absolutely fine. Right, so let's get on with creating the hook links. Okay, so to do the hook link, you're gonna to want to take around about 10 inches of your 16 pounds mono, okay? So yeah, about 12 to 15 inches, something like that, because you've got to, uh, obviously understand you're going to be tying two grinners onto that, so that is going to shorten it down. Um, you can vary this depending on how long you want your um, rig to be, your rig body. So if your rig body is going to be longer, obviously you are going to need um, a longer hook link. The reason why I do the hook links first is uh, it just makes it a lot easier when it comes to doing the rig body as to where you're going to crimp it and stuff like that. Right, so we've got our 12 inches of 16 pounds monofilament there. First of all, we're going to tie the size one hook on. Now, the only knot I'm gonna use is a grinner, okay? So you put the mono through the back of the eye going forward like so, okay? Uh, and then you pull that through, put that up towards like that, so it's going like 
so I'm going to try and get it to work. Now what you do is, you, with this bit, the tag end here, you come back and create a loop. So it kind of goes like so. So you create a loop just like that. And then with the tag end here, you go underneath the loop and go around the, the two lines like so. So it's coming through like that. And you want to go through that hole, that gap, around four to five times. So there's two, three, four, and one more for luck. Uh, not the easiest thing. Right, five. And then just pull that ever so slightly tight, okay? Don't pull it too tight, just pull it just so it's holding. All right, and you want to moisten the knot. Don't be afraid of a bit of saliva. That will make sure it doesn't burn out. And then just slide the knot down, so just like so, and pull tight, okay? So it should look a little bit, if the camera wishes to focus. Hang on, that's the tag end. Should look a little bit like that. All right. So what I sometimes do is just grab the end of the scissors and just use that then pull tight, not too tight, but there you go, that just pulls the knot nice and tight. I'm just going to cut a bit of the tag end off. I leave about, uh, say, two mil of the tag end. That kind of acts as like a worm stop. Um, and not only that, is if it does slip a tiny little bit, it just means the knot isn't going to come loose, all right? So that is how to do the hook. Right, so once you've um, tied your hook, you're going to want to go and grab your bead selection. Um, as I said, I'm going to simply put uh, what I've got here is white and yellow. First thing is first, I'm going to put a tiny little stop. So there's a little rubber stop, and I use that to put slide the worm over. It's kind of like a bait stop. Um, so that one goes on first, just like so. And then you want to thread your beads on in whichever order you feel is going to get you the fish. So I'm going to put three yellows like so. I'm going to put three whites. You can experiment with these as well. Like you can, on, on your top um, of your two hook clip down you could put different colours and you'll find out sort of which one's fishing best and then you can go over. So three yellows, three whites and then I'm going to put three yellows back on there as well. So lots and lots of attraction there. Place like colour. They're predatory fish. They see something flash in the sea. They can't help themselves and, uh, and bite. That's the plan anyway. And then three white ones as well. You can also put sequins. You can put um, little blades on, like little silver blades. If you've uh, got permission from the other half to use your t old teaspoons, you can break them down, put a hole in that, and use teaspoons as a, as a flapper as well, as a little shiny disc. That also works. I've also got some of them in my tackle box. There we go. So as you can see there, that is going to be my hook link. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to tie on a, a swivel, a snood swivel, to the other end of that, okay? So we're just going to pop that up there, again, using that grinning knot, and I'll show you how to do that quickly again. So grab your snood swivel, through the swivel, and again, bring it up, up along, circle, loop background with the tag end, through the loop, and then wrap it around both lines. So again, I'm gonna do that four times, two, three, four. Honestly, grinner knots are the you can literally, I've got away with really knowing two knots in my life. That's a knotless knot and a grinner knot. And that's simply for um, carp fishing. And I've never really need to find anything else. Again, moisten the knot down, slide it into place, give it a tug, and then just cut off the tag end, leaving, as I said, about two mil. As I said, if, it, that just, if there's a little slip there, it won't matter. It shouldn't do anyway. Right, so there we've got ourselves 
one hook link. So repeat that process twice. As I said, you can uh, you can vary it as well. So you can change of your other hook link. You can do what you like with. You can change the beads. So yeah, do that twice, and then we'll get back to the next part of the video. So pause that and go and do your other one. So just like Boo Peter, here's two I made earlier. Well, you saw one of them, but I made another one. Right, so now you're gonna grab your shock leader or main rig body material. I use 60 pounds. Um, I actually don't have a shock leader on the end of my reels, so I quite like to have a strong shock leader on my rig body, because it just takes a little bit of the pressure. Um, you wanna take it off around about a metre. Um, obviously, this can vary depending on your preference and how long you want your rig body to be. But they're, they're gonna need to be at least, if you times um, your rig body here by three, uh, so say what's that, 12 inches, if you times that by three, that's 36. You want that um, at least say 40 then inches long, um, preferably I say a bit longer. So just cut off about a meter of whatever rig uh, body you're gonna use. Okay, so you've cut off your rig body material. This is said, that was 60 pound greased weasel. Uh, now we're gonna start from the bottom and we're gonna work our way up, all right? So let's pop those scissors there and I'm gonna pop these up there so I'm gonna keep everything in shot as well as I can. Right, so you're gonna grab the sinker clip with the swivel, as I said, from start from the bottom and then again, you guessed it, we're going to use a grin and up. So slide it through. You can also use a crimp if you wish, but I'm going to use a grinner. And you're going to need about six turns on this because it's a lot thicker line. You don't want anything really less than about a four because it will just slip. So one, two, three, four. Five, that'll do. So say really moisten this as well. Really, really moisten that. And then you want to, before you pull the knot down, just loop, do it a little bit tight. There we go. And what I'll do at this point is I'll connect a lead weight, and this will make the making the rig so much easier. So connect your weight on. And just give your rig body a tug. Straighten it out. Make sure it's nice and strong. It's not, that's not going anywhere, that's a good knot. And as I say, leave about two mil, three mil. I'm gonna leave a little bit more to allow for some slip. Get rid of the rubbish. So now you've got a meter of rig body and your clip sorted, all right? Now, all we're gonna do is we're gonna slide on all of the components, all right? So the first thing we'll do is we'll slide on the bottom crimp. I'm gonna hope these crimps fit now. Yep, they do, they fit perfectly. Slide on one crimp, one bead, one bead, one bent rig clip. Obviously when you're doing this, make sure the bead doesn't go through that rig clip hole, as you can see there. Um, it doesn't, but just make sure it doesn't because that'll be a waste of time. Feed on the other bead. And you guessed it, another crimp. And we're gonna, we're gonna put all the components on, yeah? So now we're gonna go as we're working our way up. So another crimp. There is a reason for this madness. And then another bead, bent rig clip, another bead. The beauty of working with 60 pound shock leader rig material is it's so easy to use and it just flies through any hole you put it in. And then the last crimp through there. All right, settle that down, you can ignore all that. And then what we're gonna go and do is we're gonna go and tie off that main line swivel. And how we connect that to our rod, we're just gonna use a Genie Quick Link clip, which is in my tackle box. So we have that on the end of the rod at all times. Then we can clip the rig on, clip it off, so we can prepare rigs um, as we're fishing. So we can simply take the rig off and put a new rig on. So again, pop that little swivel on and do a grinner. 
just when you're doing that, just make sure you've got en enough. Yeah, this is going to be a very long one. This one I probably could have got away with uh, a little bit less on the rig material, but oh, I still could. To be honest, I could just make my uh, pull my grinner up a bit more, but we'll keep it long so it's a bit far apart. All right, so two, three, four, five. Pull that, and of course, moisten. Lovely, and then we're just gonna tighten the knot on the on there. Pull it down. Pull it down nice and tight. Lovely, jubbly. Yeah, that's lovely and tight. Beautiful. That knot is sitting nice. Tag end. I'm not even gonna mention the. Well, I am gonna mention the two mil, but you get the point. Don't cut it too short. There's no need to. Right, so. As you can see, we've now got all our components here, and they all need to be crimped up. So what you want to do now is go ahead and connect your hook links. So we're going to separate those, push that up there, and we want our bottom um, set up here. Okay, so clip on your hook link with a little with that little snood swivel. They're not always easy to go on, but once they're on, they're on. You can use uh, little rig clips and stuff like that, but come on, you know you want to go on, or maybe it doesn't. You get the idea though, put that on, I'll come back in a second when I've done it. Right, so that's now on. So as you can see, because we haven't crimped anything down yet, the beauty is, is we can adapt it as much as we need to. So we'll just keep keep hold of what we need for now. So what do we need? We need the crimp and all that bits and bobs. So what, why I put the weight on is it helps keep it nice and tight. So what we go and do now is we'll hook this bottom clip down onto the weight down here, as you can see. All right, so clip that onto there so it's nice and tight. And then we will pull up with the bottom swivel until, as you see there, the hook link goes tight. And then we know exactly where to crimp it. See, once you've crimped it first, as you can see, it's sitting up like that now. Um, so what we want to do is, I always bring the crimp a little bit higher than it needs to go to allow for stretch. So um, you want what you want really is that rig body material just to be ever so slightly loose and you want the strain to be on the hook link because when it casts, that rig body will pull tight and it will be taking all, the, all of the strain anyway. Um, otherwise what you'll find is um, once you have a few casts out, it won't clip down anymore because the mono on the hook link has, uh, has stretched. So as I say, pull up on the, uh, pull down on the crimp just a little bit just so that the rig body's ever so slightly loose. And then we'll just go ahead and crimp that where we're happy. I'm happy with it there. So we'll crimp that. No need to go absolutely nuts. Just just squeeze it like you're squeezing a, a nut. Just go gentle. Uh, I don't know what sort of nut I meant there, but you can guess. Right, so let's make sure that's all right. I'm 100% sure it is. It needs to be right. <laughs> yeah, look at that, perfect. And then what we'll do on there is we're just gonna crimp, as you can see there, we're just gonna, that crimp, we need to just put into place. I allow just an ever so slight bit of movement, but really not a lot. You're looking at about a mil again. There you go, and we'll go and crimp that down. Again, don't go mad, just treat it with a little bit of respect. It doesn't have to go if you go nuts, you'll just simply go through the trace and that'll be that. There we go. That ain't going anywhere. So as you can see, our bottom one is nice and... Hang on. We'll put it back onto the clip. There we go. It's nicely clipped down. Look at that. So clipped there and clip there. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we'll drop that down the side, is we need to position now 
the second crimps at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect up that hook link onto our bent clip, find out where the point we need to crimp it at. So connect your hook onto the bent clip there on the uh, lower one and crimp it in place. So let's go on and do that. So we've got that in line. You can probably see it's nice and tight with a rig body. Uh, so just keep that rig body ever so slightly loose. And then we're going to go ahead and crimp that bottom one, which will hold it in place. Just like so. Once the bottom one's in, obviously that's where the hook is going to set. So the top one you can kind of let go or do whatever with. And then just bring it down. So I leave a tiny little bit of a gap just so it can move. But hardly any at all. Crimp it down, crimp it down, crimp it down. Lovely. So there we have it. A place rig, two hook clip down, which goes onto an impact lead and it runs down nice and neat, streamlined. Yeah? And then you've got the very end of that rig. As I said, that, and you just clip that onto your main line. So, the edge is what, that little trick I hear you ask and you want to know about. Well, here goes. So, what do I dif do differently to what other people do, maybe, um, is this. I have got about a BB tri uh, shot there, just a coarse fishing split shot. And I put that around about, f oh, what's that? three or four inches from the top of that snood, okay, to allow the beads to come up so that they're, they're still free willing. And I will just pop that on there and I'll just pull it tight. So pull it in and I'll just pop that split shot on there. Now, the reason for this is I believe it, holds, it helps hold it down a little bit. Not a lot, but just a little bit because the turbulent waters are the sea, as we all know. So that being down on, on a turbulent water is just going to be blowing everywhere, isn't it? It's going to be lifting up, and it's not going to be flat on the bottom. Now, a little weight on the end of the of the hook link, you know, as I said, about four inches, three and a half, four inches, uh, uh, where that uh, snoo swivel is. I just think it helps keep it on the bottom. So let's pretend your beads are up here. And you half your worms here, or you you know your worms on the hook. It it just helps if it's calm weather. It just helps pin it all to the bottom. Whether it works, whether it doesn't work, I don't know. But it's just something that I experimented with last year, and um, I only managed to get out about three or four times for place. But I did really really well, and I had some lovely lovely fish. So that's what I'm going to suggest giving a go. Um, is popping a split shot. You can put it in different places. I'm just going to put one on here as well. Um, just on your hook link, just because I believe it just helps hold it to the, you know, the bottom of the seabed a bit, almost like a, almost like a, a boom would, you know, a boom just points the line in the right direction. I just feel a, a split shot on there, just helps it, you know, keep it to the bottom and keep keep it pointing in the right direction. But anyway, that, ladies and gentlemen, is my version of a place rig. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, give me a shout. If you don't like it, please do comment. I don't, I'm not, uh, I don't want to not hear any opinions. If you don't like it, let me know. But that is exactly how I do my, my place rig. All right, two at clip down, load of beads, split shot to hold it on the bottom, a nice interchangeable snoods and, and hook link snoods. One last thing. What is the beauty of this is uh, if your hook breaks or it snaps or it gets rusty, all you can do, simply need to do, oh, we lost our light there. Put her back, she's being naughty. It won't stay there now, will it? Of course it won't. Oh, that'll do. All we've got to do is simply disconnect it from that uh, rig body, take it off and put a new one on. Really, really simple. So anyway, any questions, give me a shot and... Uh, Subscribe to my channel and uh, lots of sea fishing videos to come. Thank you very much and have a good evening, morning or afternoon whenever you're watching. Cheers.